Oh boy, you won't believe what I managed to film this week. My massive pet fire ant colony, you guys have named the Fire Nation, is without question my most ravenous, meat hungry, and prolific ant colony on the channel. As you may have seen from past videos, where we feed them a bird eater tarantula or a chicken head. And so AC family, this week, I noticed that the time had come to give this all-star ant colony the protein boost it needed. This time, a mouse. And what they ended up doing to it will leave your jaw on the floor, just as it did mine. You'll see exactly what I mean by the end of this video. Brace yourselves, everyone, as we enter the fiery Selva de Fuego, the epic paludarium kingdom of the Fire Nation Fire Ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. The innovation of the classic ant farm has come a long way since the 1950s, when the first ant farm was invented. Who would have ever thought that ant farms could actually be bioactive, with plants and a community of other animals, even aquatic ones, like the various fish, snails, and shrimp, living in this flowing, moving river world. The Selva de Fuego, a half-land, half-water vivarium, inspired by and designed to mimic the edge of the Amazon River, is ruled by my red tropical fire ants, called the Fire Nation. And they are no joke. Aggressive ants, not to play around with. They are so adapted to life around water and navigate the river surface masterfully. They set up stations on the floating aquatic plants, but can skate atop of the water surface if needed. But walking on water isn't my favorite thing to watch them do. AC family, as you may already know, the Fire Nation truly leaves us breathless when they feed. And lucky for us, it's feeding time. A few ants have found these two superworms, and word is reaching back to the colony now. Here they come. Brace yourselves, AC family, and watch how they come swarming in to feed on our offerings. These initial ants guard the superworms while more and more ants march in emerging from the nest. The entire area is now covered in a pheromone, telling all surrounding ants to come and eat. It won't be long until these superworms will be, no pun intended, the hottest thing and newest talk of the kingdom. Now when the swarm had finally arrived on location a few minutes later to start dissecting the superworms, I noticed something a bit peculiar. Have a look. Now if you're familiar with this colony and have been following them for a while, you may notice there's something a bit off about the workers. Do you guys notice it? Watching the ants feeding, I found it strange that the ratio of ordinary workers to majors and super majors, the large ants with those huge heads for cutting up food, was slightly off. In this big crowd of fire ants, I could only count around four or five super majors. This is actually a small number per sample for the Fire Nation, and it was a bit of a cause of alarm, because it meant to me that the colony was not getting sufficient protein. You see, these specialized massive super majors require extra protein and material to form, and are generally speaking nutrient expensive for the ant colony. So, if a colony is not getting enough protein in their diet, the colony will produce less of these super majors, which is not necessarily lethal for the colony, but it does mean that the colony may take longer to process food. What's even more worrying is that with nuptial flight season just around the corner for these fire ants, I fear they'll be needing a surge of protein soon in order to produce the male and female elates. And I'd hate for them to be cannibalizing their own young to meet these protein demands. So this, AC family, is why I decided it was time to give the Fire Nation the protein boost they were needing. Behold! the protein of choice. 
this dead white mouse. It's packed with an amazing amount of protein and other nutrients, which will benefit the Fire Nation greatly. And AC family, you will truly be shocked at what will be left of this mouse once the Fire Nation is through with it. Here we go, AC family, placing the mouse into the Selva de Fuego and fixing it into position. The Fire Nation doesn't seem to be jacking up into full-out attack mode, probably because they don't identify the mouse as a threat. Had this mouse been alive and moving, it would definitely be a different story. They'd be stinging this mouse to death. But of course, we don't do live feeding on this channel. The Fire Nation has been notified of the mouse's fresh carcass, and they're starting to emerge now to engage in the feast. Some of the ants are hoping to gain access to the good stuff within by way of the exposed skin on the mouse's feet. They'll be trying to burrow in through here. Others will be attempting access to the mouse's insides through its ears. Oh, the thought of fire ants entering the ears makes me shudder. The ants will attempt to enter the mouse's body any way they can through the eyes, nose, and mouth. The Fire Nation will indeed be working overtime over the next few days until this entire mouse is processed. Over the next few hours, as expected, the Fire Nation was busy performing their mass excavation and transport project. What will end up happening is that the ants will bit by bit carry pieces of this mouse back to the nest where it will be fed to the rest of the colony, including larvae and their queen who will use all this awesome protein to lay more eggs. The protein will also go towards making more super majors for the ant colony. Ants happen to be some of the world's most important detritivores in the ecosystems they are part of, breaking down dead animals like this mouse. What we are witnessing here, though somewhat gruesome to new eyes, is actually one of the most important purposes ants fulfill in the natural world. And you'll marvel at just how effective they are at their jobs. It's several hours after the introduction of the mouse. And by now, the ants have begun to gain access to the mouse's interior. What's amazing is that the ants are working in perfect synergy, communicating by way of pheromones, biochemicals laid on surfaces and wafted through the air, which communicate specific signals, carrying key messages to all ants in the colony. By now, their dissection strategies have been fleshed out no pun intended again. And as you can see, some of the ants have begun to form burrows in parts of the mouse's fur. It looks like some of the ants are wanting to burrow directly into the mouse's forehead. In fact, the ants have chosen their spots of excavation throughout the mouse's body. Where would you be burrowing if you had to eat into this giant animal? Overnight, the ants continue to work at breaking down this mouse. They cannot rest as this huge mass of food is valuable to the colony and in some cases could spell the difference between life or death for an ant colony. They not only need to break it down and bring it all into the nest ASAP, but they must also defend it as well. Now check this out AC family, before sunrise, I discovered the ants had even begun the process of stripping off the mouse's fur. Isn't that crazy? And even cooler, I noticed the ants had begun to carry chunks of mouse meat back to the nest. The excavation was officially underway. I wondered how long it would take for the ants to finish this entire mouse. How about you, AC family? How long do you think it will take the Fire Nation to fully consume this mouse? Leave your guesses in the comments and go back to your comment at the end of this video to let us know if you guessed correctly. Whatever the time frame, I hoped they would finish it ASAP because I was not looking forward to the smell of decaying mouse in the ant room. Now, AC family, watch this. What I end up seeing by morning truly shocked me. AC family, behold, in just 12 hours, the fire ants had managed to reduce the mouse to this. Wow, take a look at that mouse skull. They'd successfully stripped the mouse's head meat off, leaving just the skull beneath. I am certain under that layer of white fur, not much of the mouse's body was left either. Guys, have a look at the tail and that leg completely stripped of its flesh. I couldn't believe their progress, and to think they were carrying away the meat piece by piece. What's even more incredible was that there was no smell. They were quick enough to carry the majority of the meat away 
before any kind of stench grew from the site. But it didn't stop some flies from trying to get in that carcass. Trying being the operative word. The ants weren't about to share this meal with some maggots. Again, on night two, the ants continued to work at the remaining flesh on the mouse. Such hardworking creatures. By the way, have you guys ever wondered if ants sleep? The answer to that was found in a study. Though ants will adjust work shifts according to demand, ants generally work over a 24-hour cycle, taking hundreds of few-minute naps along the way. That way they remain productive, but get the rest they need. How neat, right? By the next morning, the mouse had officially been fully processed. Check out what was left of the mouse, bones and fur. In nature, these leftovers, which are not usable to the ant colony, would be dealt with and further broken down by other microorganisms. The entire process of entirely consuming this mouse took the Fire Nation roughly a day and a half. Though most of the body had already been carried away into the nest after the first 12 hours. Once again, AC family, we've had the privilege to witness one of nature's most important biological dismantlers as they helped a dead mouse return to the soil. As an ant keeper, I just love watching this process and the Fire Nation is definitely an expert in the antiverse at carcass deconstruction. And it made me think, what is our role in nature? And are we doing our best to fulfill it? Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, it's Ant Love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? Did you miss us? After a several week hiatus, we'll be uploading regularly again. But we weren't uploading over the past few weeks, as I have been busy putting together a production team to help me create these ant videos, so we can upload much more consistently, and hopefully more frequently for you guys. So please be patient with us as we make the transition from just me to the new AC production team. In case we miss a week of uploading during this training period. It's all part of YouTuber growing pains, I guess, right? Don't worry, I've been reading all your concerned comments while we were away and have been posting responses to them on Twitter and this channel's community tab. We ain't going anywhere and you will always get your weekly dose of the Antiverse as usual. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out and join this growing community of nature lovers following the real life drama of the Antiverse. So question, would you guys be okay with two uploads a week? The midweek upload being something shorter or more informative like ant keeping tips or the latest on Ants Canada products for ant keeping? Speaking of which, not too sure if you guys know, but we've got all the top of the line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels from beginner to advanced, as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse through our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC and her colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you'd like to watch some extended play footage of the Fire Nation breaking down the mouse. These fire ants are really just crazy. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what's so special about beetle jelly? Congratulations to who would win? Who answered? It contains a heightened amount of vitamins and nutrients. Congratulations who would win? You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is the special role for the super majors in an ant cone? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. <laughs>